Welcome everyone to the fifth day of the Kinguin Pro League. We are on our third week so far, so this is going to be the first day of the third week. We are pretty excited to see the matches that are going to be happening today. We had a little bit of a hiatus with you last week, Lothar. You had a you had something planned for the second day on Thursday. I was casting with Savic, so welcome yeah. back. Yeah, I, I heard that was an awesome day for, for you guys to cast because there were so many different classes at that day. So something yeah. new in the metagame showed up. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm back here for today. I'm really excited to be here and to cast some games. Also, um, a little clarification: we will have one match from week two today because Archon. Maybe not every one of you guys will know, but Archon had to reschedule the uh, last week matches. Uh, so we'll have a Firebat versus Xixo match today, and that yeah. will be the opener. Exactly, and you know, weirdly enough, we we're getting a match from last week, but. Thais's match is also getting postponed to next week <laughs> because he's in China and China has a little bit, to say the least, of connectivity problems. It's as most like it's almost like you're getting DDoSed. We had some problems as well in another event um, where Raynad was playing with and Dog as well, and there was a disconnect straight up for an entire turn. Both players had a had to skip a single turn, and that ended up playing pretty heavily. And uh, you know, it, some swings were made on the back of that one turn disconnect because no, they were well, in China. Definitely, yeah. So. After after some reconsideration, we moved one uh, one match from today, but you know that can happen. We'll yeah. try to minimize uh, those situations, but sometimes you can just can't do anything. Exactly. So the, also, like the reason why this is happening uh, is because this is an ongoing league. I want to explain a little bit of the format for those of you who may still be unfamiliar with it for some reason. If you haven't been, uh, you know, if you haven't been around in the past cast. This is an ongoing leak that's going to last over 10 weeks. Now, this is week three. We have seven more weeks to go. And the way this works is we have two groups with 10 players each. There's the Alliance group and the Horde group. They're not really pitted against each other, like Alliance versus Horde, but th this, these are two groups. And it's a round-robin format like it, within each group. So the 10 players are going to play against each other player in the group. So they're all going to get to play a total of nine matches. And each win that they get is going to give them more points, for instance. And the higher your rank, the more wins you get, essentially, the more likely you are to get to the playoffs. A total of, I believe, there will be the quarterfinals, semifinals, and finals. Uh, so we're going to have a total of eight players, then four players in the semifinals. And then, wait, is it six players? Uh, actually, yeah, that's six, right, six yeah, players, yes. Say, yeah. Actually, yeah. it's six because um, the first place from each group will be advancing directly to the uh, semifinals. And this is an incentive to, you know, motivate the players to play w uh, with higher stakes because you basically skip one match if you are first of your group. So that's really yeah. important. And uh, the place, the second place and the third place from each group will go to the quarterfinals. They will be battling against each other to advance for the semifinals, and that's the point uh, where Alliance and Horde will mix up. So in quarterfinals, we'll have uh, we'll have an Alliance versus Horde uh, quarterfinal. You know. Yeah. So exactly. ideally, the, the way it's gonna go is that the top three players in each group will go to the playoffs. Fourth to seventh place will be reinvited for season two of Kingwin Pro League, which obviously is going to happen a lot later down the line, since we still have you know seven weeks to go within the first season. And then the eighth to tenth spots will be open to qualifiers, so people will be able to qualify um, into the Kingwin Pro League season two, which means at at the beginning of season two we will have six open slots that will be populated from people who might have qualified, well, who will have qualified yeah. through the qualifier. And then if this goes on to season three, we're gonna have three more open slots. And you know, if if three if the three players that entered season two made it to the top seven, since they're gonna be reinvited, we're gonna have you know possibly up to six players fresh from this league's ro this season's roster so eventually the entire league will be shuffled around with you know pros that are, were invited in the first season and newcomers that are going to be making a name for themselves in season two and three so that's going to be really exciting to see as it evolves but for the time being we still have an amazing roster of matches for today the first match is going to be pre-recorded because last week as we mentioned team archon was excessively busy and they could not attend so firebat and zixo could not play so we're going to have Firebat and Zixo playing first, a uh, pre-recorded match. They're, it's gonna, they're both 1-0 right now, as far as I know, as far as yes. the scores. So this is going to be a team kill. Team Archon, obviously, um, you had that happen with um, Nihilum already. RDU yep. and Life Coach fought off against one another. So one of both players, Firebat or Zixo, is going to go 1-1 and the other will move on to 2-0. 
and then we're gonna have the you know not pre-recorded matches coming right up with RDU versus Caldi, Savic versus Gara, Brian Kibler versus Strife Crow, and Sho versus Firebat. Yeah, many amazing matches today. Um, definitely looking forward to Savic versus Gara, two of my favorite players of all time, and um, I always lo I love to see how they get against each other because then they both like amazing also deck builders so there might might be something weird going on with the decks uh like maybe gar will go with the shaman or whatever and so yeah the, 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 this is my highlight of the day i've seen uh i mean we saw savich last week with you know on tuesday when he got 0-3 with his mage which was a little unfortunate for him he had a really creative mage deck with mind mm -hmm. control decks and some really wonky cards that you wouldn't expect to see in a tournament setting and we talked about a little bit on thursday and he said that the deck didn't come out necessarily as well as he hoped it would and that it might have been a little bit of a meta mistake so we'll see what he brings this week also brian kibler stands to go you know he's he got one oh i mean oh one in the first week versus zixo now he's facing Strife Crow. Strife Crow is currently 2-0 in this entire round robins uh, format and Kibler is 1-1. However, if he wins against Strife Crow, he's going to move on to 2-1 and Strife Crow will also go to 2-1, which goes to show that in these early phases of a round robin, players who might have had a pretty weak start can equalize very easily. Like if, if Kibler beats Strife Crow here, he's going to have the exact same score. Which yeah. essentially will mean that he's, he's going to be as well in the race um, as Strife Crow is. So basically, a 0-2 score for now doesn't mean anything. It's mm -hmm. nine rounds, and um, two advance from first place. I think you will have to get like a 8-1 or something like this, maybe 7-2. Uh, but to be honest, I think like an overall uh, to advance for, to the quarterfinals, you can get it like with 6-3, something like this. Yep. So it it shouldn't be like so tough. But when you think about it, it's still 75 percent of win ratio so that's insane that's really insane for a pro player because um most of the times where you're playing at the same skill level uh it's really hard to push the win ratio above 60 so yeah it's really be a hard task really especially hard task. in a card game i think because this is where there's a, a lot of variance involved so getting maintaining like let's say you take a purely you know pure skill game with absolutely no randomness involved the best player will systematically come out on top yeah, but, but that's when it bad comes for the viewers. To, of course, of <laughs> course it is, but that's the thing. When, when uh, It can be interesting, you know, for the ex an example is chess, but when you look at a, a game like Hearthstone, maintaining a really high win rate, and I'm going to take Life Coach as an example here, who got his, uh, I think his win streak got crushed just yeah, recently. unfortunately. Um, <laughs> unfortunately for him, his win, he win she got crushed, but his win rate was exceptional, and the reason we, we kept talking about it is just because the odds of this happening in a game as highly like where every little percentage of win rate matters is really really difficult and that win rate that he had was just out of this world yeah definitely looking forward to his matches because if he can maintain like you know uh winning above three matches with uh, of four an example then his win rate will still skyrocket like super high. For yeah. uh, if I'm not mistaken, his loss at IEM this um, the the last week uh, was the first loss in ten matches, and also, well, you know, it was kind of heartbreaking for him because it was a match for uh, for the uh, semi final of um, IEM. But still, his record in March is just insane. He is like 82 percent of win ratio if i'm um, recording that correctly and yeah. yeah so we'll be looking at him closely for the next um, king win pro league matches yeah i'm really i'm really eager to see how he's gonna go out because he's not playing today but he's gonna be playing on thursday versus i think colento so it's oh. gonna be a really really heavy yeah. match for life coach here if he gets because he's currently 2-0 in the king win pro league if he goes against colento and gets a 3-0 that's gonna be he's gonna be a pretty good favorite to transition into the middle stages of the round robin with a very convincing lead over other players in the group so definitely we will shortly be moving on to the first match firebat versus zixo as we mentioned I we have I've been setups, told the, right? yeah we have the uh, the deck list I know Firebad brought Mage Rogue and Warrior and Zixo brought Hunter Mage and Warlock so quite a different lineup here. Mhm. Mm and well, the mages is, is the common ground here, but still, Rogue and Warrior in one setup that's not so common to see. And well, Hunter and Warlock, I, I'm not so sure about Hunter anymore. You know, it doesn't feel like the best deck 
um, to, to auto, auto include it in uh, setups anymore, anymore. So we'll have to see how that goes. But the first match between um, Firebat and Xixo will be Warrior versus Warlock. Yeah. Very, very interesting. And now it will de it will heavily depend on the Warlock build. There are so many builds. In fact, one of the things that I actually read on the Reddits recently um, was Firebat had, he published a spreadsheet, you know, after yeah. he had a really convincing tournament win, published a spreadsheet on Reddit, showed people how he, you know, prepares his deck list, at least partially. I mean, there's got to be more behind it, a lot more place testing. Um, and he made assumptions about how decks were going to be built. He said he, he divided classes and archetypes. And there's that one archetype that they just really didn't. Um, have a definite build for which is weird warlock weird lock they called it and if if zixo is bringing one of those weird locks and when i say weird lock i'm talking about all the demon lock quote unquote variants i've been referring to those as mid-range warlock you know hybrid warlock in many ways because sometimes you'll find cards Mm -hmm. In those specific, uh, in those specific decks that have no business being there, if you if you refer to some of the standard demon locks, we see mid range warlock without void callers. We see them without Malganis. So there, it's not really demon lock so much as it is mid range warlock. And depending on whether or not Zixo brings kind of his own tweak to that deck, maybe that could play heavily in his favor against the warrior. Yeah, we'll have to see. Like, there's we have no idea what will be going on. Like, we don't know the outcome of the match. We don't know the deck list. So, so it will be a quite a surprise, especially with the warlock. So, I'm looking yep. forward to that. And um, for the viewers, if you want to see like the past matches, uh, the results, the schedules for the league, you can you can go uh, below the stream. There's a small banner with the Kingwin Pro League site. So it's kingwin.net slash pro league, and you can learn more about the players, about their background, uh, former tournament. Uh, results and stuff so many many, many inter interesting things to learn yeah it's also uh, I mean it's a really good way to catch up on at least the rankings um, if anything so that's that's mm -hmm. one thing you should keep an eye out for so we will be starting uh, the first match firebat versus Zixo warlock versus warrior and uh, I'm actually eager to see what kind of warlock we're gonna I, I never thought I'd be happy to see warlock in the tournament <laughs> format and be like oh I wonder what it it's gonna be because a long time ago it was always zoo or handlaw and it usually got banned because both archetypes were so different but now yeah. people actually bans seem to be less and less popular um a lot of people you know tend to to go for the uh, banless formats and i think this round robin format that we've got here being so skill intensive makes those those warlock decks so unpredictable um, that it, it makes the whole viewing the deck being played super fun and i, I really can't wait to see what zixel brought yeah, definitely. Definitely, I, I totally agree. Like the point of banning Warlock in the um, in the Veto system was to um, improve your deck building by you know banning two archetypes, and it's not possible. So we'll see. Yeah, that that was the the strong point of, of Warlock is well of banning Warlock. That is, but based on that Arabian egg, um, well then again I don't. Yeah. Ruby Neg right now in Zixo's hand, and I'm gonna have to say this is probably some hybrid lock or mid-range warlock, if you want to call it that, based well, on just that. Doctor Boom. <laughs> yep. So you know, but that's Doctor Boom is almost in every single deck. I, I really wonder if Blizzard will do something about it because when you, if you remember the Tank Master issue, the reasoning behind nothing Tank Master was was that Tank Master was being played in every single deck. Yep. They they didn't. Um, I mean, the Undertaker wasn't getting played in every single deck. What happened is that the Undertaker was warping aggro in a way that forced you to play Death Rattle if yeah. you wanted to play aggro, which is the reason they changed it. But if you look back on Tink Master, suddenly it feels like Doctor Boom is more in line as far as its metagame impact with Tink Master than Undertaker. Mm -hmm. Well, interestingly enough, there's a Kazan Mystic in the Weird Dog deck, so it's been kind of. Um... T uh, like tweaked against uh, mages and hunters and you think that's that necessary because weird lock was actually built to counter mages right yeah so and against hunters it wasn't so bad either yeah i'm wondering why zixo is including a heavy tech versus mage hunter when it's already a matchup that is not exactly too bad mm -hmm, for a mm -hmm. uh, hybrid lock i really yeah, exactly got to be a little surprised there but We'll see how it pans out for him. At least it's going to be a 4-3 that you can throw on the board right now, in fact. It's going to go down immediately. He says, you know what? You're going to get value out of this Deathbite anyway, so might as well give it to you right now. 
Mm -hmm. um, I really like the comeback of Fronting Berserker in current meta game. It's like really cool and um, a high impact minion on the board. If he, if you can like, would went Im immediately after dropping him on the board. So I really love the minion being back in the meta game. Yeah, it's one of those things where it's a card that that saw play. I guess intermittently, it used to be like semi popular in some variants of the. You remember the Azure Drake Core Chrono Elite Control War? A long yeah, time yeah. Ago? Oh, that was a long time ago. Yeah, it was a super long time ago, and uh, it was pretty popular there. Now we see Blood Mage downloads in a weird lock, and I have to say I really like that choice from Zixo because I play Blood Mage in mid range Warlock for the Mortal Coil value. It's mm -hmm. when absolutely think about it, interesting. Uh, Talnos in the weird look is even better because we have two mortal coils, two implosions, two dark bombs, and um, one hellfire, one shadow flame. So there's a r really a lot of cards that you can increase with the one blood in Talnos. Mm -hmm. And the cycle is also not irrelevant. I mean, it dies and it gives you a card draw, so mm -hmm. you might as well mm -hmm. take it. I mean, there's so many damage dealing spells in mid range warlock. Right, so we'll see. We'll see implosion most likely, and yeah, we do. Oh! I wonder if that's oh. what he wanted because it, it was almost better for him to get a three attack to get a coil afterwards. Because now, so? yeah, but I, then again, I, I he can tap. So. Never mind. Yeah, exactly, you can uh, curve, curve out perfectly with that tap. So yeah, I think never that mind. Was, like, that was really, really better. <laughs> yeah, no, you're, you're right. I completely uh, blanked out on the tap. I don't know why. I should, I should be remembering life tap when I'm casting a warlock, right? Yeah, you should. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like a pretty good thing to do. All right, so. There's heavy, a lot of board contests. Like, wow. wow, so many! I can't creatures. believe this. Yeah. So from Sixo, we'll see a most likely an abu abusive sergeant, and well, that armor smith is tricky. Like, you have um, you have so so many options here. The Argus will be dropped for value. That that's nice. So you can now contest the armor smith, and then go with a dark bomb mortal for the second frozen berserker. I think. Or abusive. I guess you could go for the abusive play or dark bomb coil if you want to trade into the three two. Oh wow, you. BGH? No, what? Uh, oh, okay, uh, um, okay. I, I think that's fine. I'm not exactly sure why did he use the big game hunter, yeah. but it's like a um, more of tempo swing. But you lose then the tempo swing with a creature like Doctor Boom, you know. So I'm not exactly sure what went through his mind with that play. I guess because he's got abusive and coil and dark bomb, he's not really afraid of a, a large minion coming out. He still has good ways to deal with this. I mean, dark bomb and the BGH deal with Doctor Boom on their own, so I can probably see the reasoning. You you might go for dark bomb, trade into Boom, and then drop Void Caller here. Yeah, that's that's fine too. You have only like second Void Caller and Doom Guard. Well, okay, that's so so cool, but I misses of pain. I mean. Hmm. Well, right. the, the really great thing about this deck is there are so many different kind of plays uh, you can do each turn. So everyone has like his own specific style with that deck. Yeah. And we see now that he keeps the Dark Bomb and decides to get the Mistress of Pain out manually in case, you know, the Void Caller whiffs. You really do not want the Void Caller to bring out a 2-drop given the choice. So mm -hmm. I like this line mm -hmm. of play from Zixo. The Savannas might pose a problem, but there's a owl waiting already in the hand, so no problem there. The uh, the the issue here is: Do you want to sacrifice the void color right now to get the a uh, board advantage? If you're a fierce uh, fear bro, I don't know. Uh, you've like, got to play. You can't really play around cards that are like one-offs in yeah in, uh, in decks, right? At least that's my uh, that's my perspective. I mean, you've got to play around Alex, Grom, Hellstream. There's one of each of those, but those are yeah, win okay. conditions, whereas Brawl is more of a, a tempo swing card. And I wouldn't be surprised to just see him let Sylvanas be... Like, he's, he could trade Mistress of Pain to Boombot, and if it doesn't kill Argus, then double trade Voidcaller, get himself a Doom Guard and whatnot. Um, this is a position I'm not too unhappy about if, I, if I'm Zixo. Okay, so he will still face. Wow! That is a pretty good Boombot. Yeah, that's, he, that's awesome for him because the Basically, it didn't, didn't do anything. He doesn't want. To, yeah, I'm just. I'm just curious to see. Like that. that what big game hunter would, has. It's really bad for him. Like he, the big game hunter, the only big game hunter target, in the reload deck might be the Doctor Boom. So that bomb was basically 
worth nothing. And uh, if you play Big Game Hunter now, you will have to think about low tip, I think. But it's really bad. Like, like the situation on board is really bad for the warrior. So I'm, yeah. So this is quite nice when you can mm, like put a bigger board and trade with yeah. uh, with the Sylvana. So that that bomb wasn't worthless at all. No, no, not at all. It, it enabled a really good trade here for uh, yeah. for, but, for Firebat. Exactly. So now so. Malganis has also value with the plus two, plus two. Like your Void Color will be five. Whoa, that five, is crushing. Six. You can trade it for the Belcher. Then you trade the um, the bombs for the slimes. Actually, could you? Okay, I was gonna say, could you not drop Malganis? I, I think you have to. Go for a slower bit. play. It's a too big of a swing. Well, let's see where that goes. A boom bot to the face for two damage. It's an arcane shot. And out comes a light oh. well. Oh, wow. wow. Well, that's you can't quite... kill this. You can't <laughs> kill this. Yeah, so you, you trade one, uh, one damage, but um, really nicely done by Xixo here. Just to damage it by one, one point, so there's a 50 50 possibility of him healing for one and not for. Uh, not for five. For three. Actually, I was wrong. Like, there's Marilyn is a big game hunter target. So yeah, that was quite dumb for me. Yeah, there are two targets and in... okay, wait, no, no, there are two targets in the typical demon lock, but in the mid range warlock, sometimes you see molten giants come out, and suddenly BGH gets even more value. There are so many variants that, but I think you can make the read after you see void caller that there will not be any molten giants. Probably yes. Shadow oh, Flame. Is, this is not a bad reason? Shadow Flame, actually. It's not horrible. I don't dislike it too much. Oh, wow. That might actually make it even better. I think you, you save the Shadow Flame for better options. Which better option? I, I can't think of any against Warrior. You've seen the Acolyte. You've seen one Armor Smith. There's very little that's left, I guess. Oh, that's quite time. unfortunate with that second Void color. Well, Thunder Vargas is really good here. I'm liking this. Hmm. I'm so happy to see Mistress of Bane see play, by the way. It's one of those cards where, when it was announced, a lot of people thought it would be underwhelming in just about every circumstance because it's just a 2, it's a 1 4, and its stat line is miserable and it doesn't do much, but mid range Warlock has adapted it amazingly well. So, Boombot now with Ragnaros? No. <laughs> that would be funny though. Uh, so that the Ragnaros will be taken care of really easily. I'm not exactly sure if it's lethal. It might be, right? It's 2, 4, 5, 8, 11, 14, Boombot, Boom and Abusive and Ser abusive Sergeant. Uh, so you can play like 3, 5, 10. You get 10 damage from, from your hand because you can play Hellfire, Abusive Sergeant, and Doomguard. Yep. So that's 10, 13, 14, 16, 18. So if you get a, a really lucky Boombot, you win instantly. Yeah, it's a 50-50 win. Well, yeah, actually, it's it's, well, it's, it's a little a... less than that, but it's upwards of... It's yeah. close to the 50% range. Mm -hmm. Well, you will see it after the Hellfire, you know? He doesn't go... Oh, wow, oh. okay, that is, gonna, <laughs> that is gonna seal the game. Yeah, that's gonna seal the game. It's also really cool, the power overwhelm, power overwhelm the bombs, because it will be sacrificed anyway, so you will get the additional points of damage from that. Yep. Zexo is going to get that lethal with Dark Bomb and Doom Guard for the insta kill on Firebat, who got taken down from 20 health here. And this is one of the power, I think, of mid range Warlock. It's packing the Power of Whelmings, it's packing the Dark Bombs, it's packing a lot of. You know, you know how people used to run the, the Arcane Golem combos to insta kill people? Oh, yeah, that people? was insane. Yeah. And I remember Handlock being able to pull off lethals. Not even with Leroy, they did not even need to get their Leroy Jenkins combo with Faceless. They could just get it straight up by using it on a Silence Ancient Watcher, getting a good Shadow Flame and lining it up with some Soul Fire plays, and suddenly you would die without even them getting to dig through their entire deck. Yeah, but I was really disliking the metagame of Handlock with Leroy, Leroy One Power Realm and Faceless. It, it felt like... It, um, that amount of combo damage you can squeeze in a control uh, deck, it, it just doesn't fit the playstyle of the deck, if you know what I mean, you know? Yeah. Uh, it, 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 it was like a combo deck, 
without even a combo because it's only two cards that will basically free so you just hold on to a moment when you just gather those and it was it was really easy with a handlock which you know can draw two because cards of life tap yeah because of life tap so i really really like the change they made for Lero jenkins after a few months <laughs> yeah i mean it took them it took them a long time to change it but it was a little toxic because what you want when you're when you're facing a combo that's going to lethal you you want the deck to be constructed around it but the way handlock was built mm -hmm. is they just had it in because yeah. they just it was in the deck just because you know those cards worked well sort of on their own you could even leroy shadow flame without yeah, power of whelm and you were still doing an amazing job of, uh, of clearing the board so those cards worked well you know on their own and then people tried after the leroy nerf to include power of whelming with arcane golems and whatnot but it it took an extra card slot and it was more cards to put together to get the, the same effect and eventually they phased away from that specific line of play and went for a more standard control approach yeah what do you think about uh, faces manipulator like will it make a comeback because you will, we are seeing so many big creatures in the meta game, but he dropped out, out of yeah. like almost like no, from every single deck he dropped out like instantly. We, if we you saw want... him in droids and the warrior, right? Yeah, it was everywhere pretty much. And the thing is, I I, I cast a tournament last weekend, which actually um, we saw faceless is everywhere. Really? Um, yeah, it was it was weird, but then again, you know, it was kind of an open registration tournament. But in the okay. top eight, we saw like five decks with faceless manipulators in them. Um, so that was kind of interesting because it's a card that I just hadn't seen for a long time now. It was a little okay. interesting. I I don't know if we're gonna see them until until priests come back. Maybe maybe when priests come back in the meta game, which means the meta game has slowed down a little bit. Um, maybe then faceless will reemerge as a really good tech option. Either way. The uh, next game we're going to be seeing, Firebat has lost the match, so he gets to keep his deck. Zixo, on the other hand, has locked his Warlock out of the the range of possible decks. So he's probably going to go for, uh, well, he's going to have to go for a Mage or Hunter. And yeah. since you've seen a Warrior, you might be inclined to go for a Mech Mage. Yeah, I think so. And uh, we actually got the information right now that Zixo will go for the Mage. And I really like the Mage versus Warrior matchup because... Even when you have a really slow uh, slow start, you can still grind the damage out uh, with your creatures. It, the only important thing is to worry not having a fire warrix, I think. Yeah. Because then you, your creatures from turn one to two just will stack with the damage above the usual stats, so you get more value from uh, for the mana. So yeah. Although unlikely though, so I've seen, you know, if you get a double snow chugger opener, the fire war axe is a non-issue. Because what they will do is they will freeze the first mm -hmm. one, you play the mm -hmm. second one, and then once that one hits, they're locked out of their weapons for the entire game. If they don't get, you know, proper removal through minions. And also, so, like, some mage players are using water elementals as an additional freeze. True. True. Um, and that's very stick. impactful. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Oh, there's already a um, snow trigger in Sixo's opening hand, so he will definitely keep that and probably mulligan away the Frostbolt and Goblin Blast Mage. But as we can see, Firebat has a really great opening hand. I would actually keep every single card from that. Yeah, and he does. And double snow is out. Uh oh, well, hmm, it's how still not bad. Yeah. It's not bad. Because, you know, you got the Shield Slam and the Armor Smith. The Armor Smith will be really important. Yeah, just getting that extra bit of armor is going to be pretty important. I remember when... Uh, there was, was there a glitch when armor didn't... You, know, you, you couldn't get frozen through armor? That, that wasn't a glitch. I think that was just a rule that was changed, you know? Okay. Because it, it, it kind of makes sense. If you didn't deal damage, then it doesn't freeze, right? And you didn't deal damage because you had to chip off the armor yeah it was kind of like the um what's it called the divine it's kind of like the divine shield yeah, effect yeah, where exactly. you, you don't get frozen through divine shield like the bug was with alex Straza removing the armor that was insane no that was crazy yeah so firepad's gonna go for a shield slam on that little chugga chugga because you can't let that guy chugga chugga on for days especially when you have a second um weapon in your hand mm -hmm. a really insane hand for fire but you have to say that right so like uh, yeah, I'll be honest. Weapon, 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 turn four, drop. Really insane. Well, this Shredder gift us on this glorious day. It's a 4-1. Oh, wow, oh, wow. That, that's not... That's not quite good for Oxyxo here. Well, I mean, you trade with a Shredder. Well, you don't Do want to be trading with anything. So. Yeah, you just go face. It's quite unfortunate for the Armosmith, you know. 
because that, that armor swap will now have value and not not only by generating the armor but also by trading for 1-1. One, one. Mm -hmm. Zixo's hand is a bit on the dry side. I mean, it's got a lot of burn, but that's not, I, that's not what's going to win you the game. You probably have to kill uh, the 1-2. Yeah, but the mirror entity is already cool now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I hope Firebat have... doesn't play into it first, because that would be a mistake. Protecting the 4-1 behind the uh, will do that. Taunt. He will just skip probably the minion this turn and just go with uh, Death Spite. And attack into the 4-1? Um, I'm not exactly sure. Like, you can keep your full Shredder, I guess, if you do that. Do you want to keep a full Shredder uh, on turn 6 for Mage? Like, what are the options here? Uh, you want to get the Death ball. Spite for, for, for one durability, that's for sure, so... Yeah. yeah, so he does trade the weapon's first charge into the 4-1, which I think makes a bit of sense, and Zixo's hand is blanking out again. Yeah, that's He's going to have to get bad. some spur parts for that Archimage, because otherwise this is not looking too good. And if Firebat plays into the Mirror Entity at any point, maybe that will help Zixo. Well, it will be a shield smite in this turn. Oh. Oh. Is that a nymph back full at all? Well, right now it's not, but he pings it to make sure that the Death's Bite... Yeah, so is, uh, if he wouldn't ping it, then um, he would have to trade into the mana worm with that player master. So that was really mm, that was really bad for Xixo. And now we see a really lucky draw for Firebat because he he is able to trade the weapon and the pyromancer, pyromancer killing both creatures. So that's really insane. And you will also buff your creature above like wow. How many points yeah. of damage will be that be? Seven, right? Seven. Yeah, I think damage. it'll be on seven damage here. This it, is gonna be a really. Eight, right? And Zixo actually has to seven. deal with this yeah. seven. Like, this is actually really crazy. A seven three. You used two frost balls already. This is exactly what you want to use your frost bolts on. And having the fireball at seven three. A, a nice draw though, because you can now curve out, and bluff the second layer entity. Uh, Firebat is. Uh, Oh, now he will play Big Game Hunter, right? On the table. <laughs> yeah. I think Otherwise, will, like, if, if there were a Dr. Boom... Yeah, if Look there at were Firebat's Dr. Boom. face. Look at Firebat's face. Like, what? What is going on? Har har har. Pirate. I can't play anything here. I mean, you, can, you might play oh, Belcher because it's low Belcher impact. First. Oh. You think so? Yeah. I don't mind those lines of play because Belcher doesn't even trade with itself. So if it is yeah. a mirror entity, then does it really matter much? Well, let's well, see what Sixo gets. An unstable, unstable portal. portal. Oh, oh, this might be the card that defines the way this game's gonna go. A really cool that um, a really cool stuff here is that um, there's a counter spell um, backing up <laughs> your Antonidas <laughs> from any kind of executes or or, or uh, other shenanigans like a uh, shield block, armor up, uh, shield slam, or whatever. Yeah, and you know what's the worst part? Firebat sees the Archmage, and he knows, well, that's a f counter spell. <laughs> but it doesn't matter, because I have no spells. But wait, I don't yeah. even have removal for this, even if I did have anything, so... So, if he would actually drop anything else but the Belcher, he would be able to kill it. Yeah, funny enough, he would have actually... Like, if you dropped BGH just because he wanted the BGH, that would have been just enough damage... Yeah. Um, to, ki ...to kill that Archmage Antonidas, but unfortunately... That is I, not I think the with case. that kind of hand, it would it was really better to play Big Game Hunter first to so check for mirror entity and then drop the pilot trader because you build so much board advantage. Mm -hmm. So now you deal damage to the Antonidas, yeah, you do. It kind of sucks. Yeah, you've got to do your best, but now unstable portal. Loaded. Okay, that's uh, another bomb. a really bad draw. <laughs> that's not too bad. It's a big body for all it's worth. Let's do unstable from portal. unstable portal. Let's see that first time. <laughs> Unstable Portal gives you a random card in the game. <laughs> that would be so funny. Well, it's not it. That doesn't really curve too well. I almost feel like... You have to uh, drop uh, low tip and the night blade? That really sucks. Yeah, because you want to cycle those fireballs to get maximum value out of your Archmage, but... So, so you want to kill the Belcher. Then Antonidas is on one HP point. Or you can drop Fireball to Belcher, kill it and with the night blade. small Nightblade, yeah. And I you think get that's the second the Fireball. Uh, so I think that's fine. 
Then he will have to trade the, the Pilot Shredder into Antonidas just to save 5 points of HP. Well, he got 10, 10 points of HP in, in his hand, so it's not actually bad. And he's seen two Frost Bolts, so how worried is he really about burn? Yeah. But I, I think, think this so. is going to be a Fireball uh, Nightblade turn. Because it does give you another piece of removal for the following turn. Whereas if you drop Lothem and Nightblade, you're missing out on your follow-ups, really. That's the, that's the biggest issue. It, I think Sixer was not even playing um, Clockwork Gnomes, right? In this type of deck when you play Mana Verms? I've seen, I've seen decks without Cog Masters and they play Clockwork Gnomes for the spare part for Arc Mage. So they'll be running double Mechanical Yeti, double Clockwork, two Mana Worms, two Unstable Portals, and they'll be cutting a lot of the mech standard stuff that you'll see usually. I see, I see. By the way, what do you think about Pilot Shredder? I mean, um... What As a card? Because I, I, don't, I don't like it. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, the, the, don't you think it's just too dominating in almost every single type of decks? Uh, I mean, there will be, there will always be a kind of cookie cutter card, right? In mm -hmm. any, in any, in any meta game ever. The problem is, I feel like the Shredder brings alongside its cookie cutterness a little bit more, a little bit too much uh, well, power yeah. and stickiness and synergy, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. No. Yeah. Well, this um, situation sucks for six. So you have to go with Fireball and Low Tip, I think. I would slam it down right now because I don't know what this accomplishes. What does Doctor Boom accomplish here? A setup, a potential lethal setup, or oh, really? And he's playing it to BGH against a handlock uh, against a warrior. That's you know he's got at least the one in his deck. So we'll see what ends up happening, but. I mean, Fire Badge just goes to face, says, you know what, I've got my two Shield Maidens, what do I care? Yeah, exactly. You, you want to deal with this board now, Mage, <laughs> better top like a Flame Strike, because this is not going to be good for you. you. You need a Savage Roar for some nature combo here. I think I think it's pretty easy to get. Yeah, from, from two Unstable Portals? Mm -hmm. Yep. You get Unstable Portal, get random cards, and you'll score exactly what you need. <laughs> Imagine that odds to get, like, Force of Nature and Savage Roar from two Unstable Portals. <laughs> oh, what does the boom bot hit? It hits the face. Oh wow, what a whiff. Crazy whiff. And he fireballs himself. <gasps> oh wow. Was it a misclick? No. Oh. No way. He knows he's got yeah, no way no, to win. Frost bolts. <laughs> uh, Dr. <laughs> Dr. Seven got countered by uh, a Mr. Three. I, so. I still think that Big Game Hunter should be played early on. Because you have only one target uh, against the mage, right? And he was top decking at that point of the game. Oh, was he? No, no, well, they, he, he still had the Antonidas. But still, he didn't play anything at turn 7. So you have to be sure, okay, there is no Antonid uh, no Dr. Boom on turn 7. Exactly. So what do you care? There's like 1 to 20, 1 to 19, 1 to 18 in the upcoming turns to draw Dr. Boom. And you will be sitting with that big hunter in your hand. Yeah, but he still has, I think what really, you know, sealed the deal for the play that he made was he's got two Shield Maidens, so oh, yeah. he can afford yeah. playing it somewhat, you know, slowly. Um, mm -hmm. Because even if he feeds a Belcher into Marantity, it's really not the biggest deal. And if things do get out of control, he's got Shield Maidens on the back end to recover the health. So I think he wasn't really too worried about that stuff. And as a result, he ended up, uh, he took the series either way, very convincing. Yeah, I mean, the, true. another series, but the game pretty convincingly, which makes the series one-to-one -one right now um, so for now both we'll players. So now we'll see a mage versus mage game. How exciting. Exciting. Well, maybe it will be a freeze mage, and then we'll be like, oh, Resident Sleeper, freeze, freeze, um, blizzard, flame strike. Yeah, but I do like, I'd like to see a freeze mage versus mecha mage. It reminds me of the freeze mage versus zoo. It's at least a little bit more um, interesting sometimes than seeing no mech mage versus mech mage. Then again, Zixel's list is a bit on the stranger side with mm -hmm. a lot of tweaks to the mm -hmm. standard mm -hmm. mech approach. And, you know, just unstable portals on their own can bring their fair share of complexity to a game. Yes, they can. That's very true. I'm still curious, though, why did Firebat bring Warrior? Well, he won with it, so, you know, it's not bad. Uh, but oh, no, of course, but... Yeah, we we have seen many iterations of Warrior during IEM Katowice, and uh, people seem to drop, uh, like Orange did drop Executes from his deck. He played two Throating Berserkers, Bomb Lobbers, you know, so it was more tweaked to beat um, 
aggro well not aggro because majors mid-range like, mid-range yeah, mid well. deck so yeah. uh it's all about tempo swings and uh, it had to come to a, a point in meta game like this because bomb lobbers are just waiting for that like they they were made at first point i think to beat the gazette and auctioneers right because it's like yeah perfect, definitely perfect counter. it was perfect counter but now it's also great because there are so many creatures that not that are not exceeding uh four points of hp like azure drakes um like pirate shredders um last like mage tinker town technicians yeah, yeah last mage those are perfect targets for for those uh, bomb lobbers uh it's kind of sad that it's random right but still i think it's a great card and i'm really Really happy to see them in the meta game, and also I have two golden ones, so I have to use them soon. You know. Okay, I get. It's kind of like it's the golden syndrome where yeah. when you have a golden card, you've got to make a deck that revolves around that card. In fact, I did exactly that with my golden Lore Walker show. <laughs> so. Oh yeah, that was the, I had, I made the same thing, but it was like one year ago, you know. Oh uh, goodness. Yeah. It was my first golden legendary, and I got the second one like when GVG came out. Really? Oh yeah, wow! So I, I I had like 400 boosters from in that time, and I didn't get a golden legendary at all. So it's kind of sad. Well, wow, that's pretty crazy though. But so so we were gonna be seeing mage versus mage afterwards, which is I just want to go back to their lineups. There's gonna be a hunter left for Zixo. Yeah. Firebat's gonna have a rogue left. Uh, so, so I now have to say, yeah. Please go go on go on. Yeah, I, rogue versus hunter. Like it, depending on who wins this one, obviously. Like it, let's, if if Zixo wins. Um, he's gonna be going up against another mage with his own hunter, which is also pretty viable or against a rogue So I feel like Zixel's lineup is pretty solid against the rest of Firebat's lineup if he it wins this It really depends on the hunter, you know if it, Because if that hunter is a face hunter, then it's great against the rogue But a midland right. hunter with Savannah high mains, which can be sapped for like a steal a turn thing uh, I don't think that, that that's so much go good for the rogue and oh, oh, freeze! Oh, the, the dome is coming. Well, that's not. Did I miss it? Yeah. Oh, wow. So, Clockwork Gnomes here in Zixel's deck is that exactly as I said. I think this is going to be a deck that tries to get at least the spare parts up. And uh, mm -hmm. you, you want to have those spare parts. Like, even if you cut all the mech, you know, the emphasis on mech, and you go a little off the beaten path with it, you still so... want to get the spare parts. How do you want to win against Freeze Mage with um, with Mage? Because that, Your that unstable mirror, ent portal, that an mirror entity is just awful. Like imagine mirror entity a Doomsayer. It's an instant board wipe. Unstable portal. Oh, explosive sheep already being drawn. Out. Like that's huge. It's really huge. Do you want to clear that? Hmm. Interesting, right? I wouldn't think of clearing that mad scientists. Ragnaros is gonna beat that mage. You are asking oh, what's yeah. gonna kill it. That, that, that's, that's a really great card against mage. That's like, one way to beat the mech mage. I mean, without, a mage. without a polymorph, you can do check. Against. Well, you know what's interesting is I'm looking at this deck from Zixo, and I think I've seen the exact same list on ladder yesterday. The exact same list, card well, for card. It's not something like unusual, a rag and mage, right? Especially uh, in like some time ago when the mid range, mid -range uh, mage was really popular, popular mm -hmm. with Kirators yeah. and you know the Dragoners was exactly there for uh, freeze mages. Exactly, and I, what I'm thinking right now is that this deck might contain a single Kirintor. If he's playing three secrets, then suddenly the extra Kirintor can come in pretty handy at times um, with the mad scientists on their own. Hmm. Well, we'll have to see it. And Noitron will. Kind of will, will be impactful now, not really. Not that much, but what's really interesting is that the Ruby Egg is protecting Zixel's board against, the, well, protecting. It's mitigating the damage yeah, that a, yeah. a pure AoE would do. Still something, like, mm -hmm. you know, the JPEG, like, it's something. Yeah, at least it's something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's Second Ice Barrier, that's, that's nice. It's like healing touch. Yep, for mages, and it's oh, gonna get counter spell. spell. Okay, so at least he knows the counter spell is gone, so the flame strike will have value. So that's that's important. Uh, I think Sixer will not play Yetis in this deck when he's playing counter spell. 
Mm -hmm. Well, that's the that's the variant that I'm talking about. It's it's much less mech emphasizing, but he's playing the mech warpers and the anoyotrons, which leads me to believe he might have a slightly more standard list than because the list that I was referring to contained a bit more of the mid range mage approach and less of the mech one. So probably not the exact same list. Now that I see uh, the anoyotron, I think that's what's slightly different. The good thing about triggering that counter spell is that he knows that it's not mirror entity, so he's not afraid of giving his opponent. Um, an Acolyte of Pain now. He can just afford playing it mm -hmm, down and starting mm -hmm. to draw for a few cards this time. Yeah, you're not playing that right now, I don't think. Hmm. Well, you have one dead card in your hand because you won't play the Mirror Entity at all, I think, in this matchup. Like, maybe on turn 8, if you want to play around Alexstrasza, like, you think he will kill you next turn. But, um... It, I'm really it, surprised it, here for the. Sorry, I'm, I'm really surprised yep. about the Blast Mage on the Acolyte of Pain here. I well, thought he would maybe consider buffing the Mana Worm by just one. You know, you, you give a taunt to something mm -hmm, or you mm -hmm. play a. F I, I don't know what, but. Well, you, you have to build board against uh, the Mage, and now it's kind of. The, the Flame Strike has some value, but not really. Because it kills two creatures and still puts up a 4 4 on the board. So. Hmm. It doesn't really. I, too much. I still like it though. I think it's a really strong play. Or Nova Doomsayer also Nova works Doomsayer well because they do. Yeah. Seems to be better. I think. Mm -hmm. It's weak against Fireball, but that's one less Fireball you're gonna take to the face. So it's pretty. It's pretty strong. I wonder. You're still uh, playing for time. So you almost want to play Explosive Sheep here and tr trigger that that egg before you Flame Strike. That's also nice. That's also nice. Yeah, I kind of like that line of play. You play Explosive Sheep, you ping the shield off, you mm -hmm. know which one, mm -hmm. and then you set up that good Flame Strike. Yeah, that, that's, the minions. I think that's the, that's the turn you want to play it. Yeah. Good catch. Alright, so we see the Explosive Ship going down. It's uh, disguised as a Sheep. It's actually a Polymorph. You wouldn't know. <laughs> So, well, this looks kind of bleak, Fox X over here. And the worst part is you can't play Mirror Entity against against and against Freeze Mage because he plays Doomsayer and suddenly you lose the game. So it's so it's yeah. so painful as a well, Freeze. At least I mean, not this turn because the only thing you can plan to do with that Mirror Entity is to mitigate the the Alex Draz on turn nine. But then you won't be able to play. Um, to play uh, the Ragnaros in turn 8, and you really want to do this. Oh, missed one point of damage. This can be crucial. We'll see exactly what ends up happening, but I don't think Firebat is on his way to really be threatened by anything Zixo does up until this point. I mean, Ragnaros comes out. If it misses Doomsayer, that's a GG. Um, but if it hits face, he still needs to find a bit more burn. I, I really like the play that uh, even, like, he didn't have to play the Doomsayer, he played it anyway. I think that the reason was that he just draw it, so he had double Doomsayers, and it's really not that important to have so many answers in your hand. Oh, wow. Okay, so what we'll see here? Go for face. Basically. Yeah. Whoa, here comes the power card. Yeah, that's, that's the end of the game. Alex draws an auto win. Yeah. Back to back, you know, you just play a turn after the other, and if Zixo can't can't pop that block twice in a row, this is gonna be game. Although I can I see how many points of damage is that. That's five. I mean, HP. That's five HP. Exactly five HP here for. So you don't uh, have Firebat. enough to pop it. Yep, he need to have a Blood Mage Thanos to pop it with a Hero Power, but Firebat's not gonna get lethal now with that Pyroblast. He's gonna have to wait a little while. And now there might be a first Ice Block, but oh. the problem is getting the second one out. So there's, I don't know, so you have at least one more turn, so you just play Pyro Burst to face? I mean, just attack with uh, Alex Straza until you can auto win. You know, you clear this board, you go full face with everything you've got. And, uh, yep, that's gonna be game. Exact lethal for oh, yeah, Firebat, right. Zixo, yeah, that's, yeah exactly, there's, there's no way with Flame Strike for Zixo to really stabilize after that point. Um, I mean, Alex Straza is the win condition of Freeze Mage, and Mage, I mean, you know, Freeze Mage is especially strong against those mid-range zoo types of uh, of aggro decks. And 
Zixel's Mech Mage is exactly that. It falls exactly in that category, and Mech Ma like Freeze Mate has such an easy time of maintaining board control that really there is no way for uh, for Zixel to come back here. The problem for those aggro decks that uh, have slim ch slim chances against uh, Freeze Mage is the lack of charge creatures. So the only option to deal instant damage is um, projectiles like fireballs, frostbolts, or whatever, mm -hmm. and um, decks like. Face Hunter or um, even Fast Droid. Those decks have options to burst the Freeze Mage down like instantly from your hand. So it's yep. really it's that that's the most important thing you have to get to um, to get against the Freeze Mage. Or on the other hand, you have, uh, other hand you have to be really slow like a warrior and just bulk up enough uh, of armor to be out of range of Freeze Mage. Yeah, you want to get a huge buffer so that Freeze Mage doesn't really cause a problem to you. So, Firebat's only deck left in the Conquest format is Rogue, so that's going to mean he's going to have to go for his Rogue. And Rogue, I mean, Zixo, knowing this, um, has two choices, Mech Mage, again, or Hunter. If he goes for Hunter, we have to assume it's Face Hunter, or at least that would be my guess, unless he thinks his, you know, his version of Mech Mage is even weaker. A little bit more of a mid-range approach to Mech Mage might be a bit too slow to really put heavy pressure on the Rogue, so maybe for that reason mid-range Hunter is almost better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll have to see. Like, I'm fan, I'm, well, not exactly maybe fan, but I like both versions of Hunter. Like, I think Face Hunter and mid Hunter are really great, uh, but the problem uh, with those with those decks, uh, it's kind of draw dependent. It, they are kind of draw dependent, like, like Mech Mage, you know? If you yep. don't get, get a really great start from Mech Mage, or you draw like two Mad Scientists, two Secrets on your open hand, you kind of screwed. Well, we saw, um, who was it that won with that hand last time? We saw somebody with two Mad Scientists and two Mirror Entities in their starting hand, and they, they won the game with... I think they. Oh, yeah, I think it's because they got Archmage Antonitis and Doctor Boom right off the bat. And they, <laughs> I, I remember that just curved like yeah, Antonitis and yeah, Boom, was and it was match, over. Match like yeah. that. that was oh, yeah, pretty but crazy. He, but he did draw like turn seven Doctor Boom, turn eight Antonitis stuff. I think it was yeah, something it was similar. Just crazy, yeah. So Wait, wasn't that Life Coach actually? It might have been. I just forget who it was that had that specific line of cards in their hand as they were going through. So. Mech Mage can still win, but as I, as you said, you know the odds of winning with a bad hand is pretty terrible, um, especially against a Rogue. Rogue is now back, and it's right now like you know in the first two weeks of the Kingwin Pro League, I'd say Rogue wasn't exactly a go-to class by default, but Hunter is getting phased out a little bit now. Paladin's coming back, and as a result, Rogue is also getting a rise in popularity since it's got such a huge matchup edge on the Paladins. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Like, but the problem with Rogue is. It does like um, cycle a lot in the meta game. Like sometimes it can be instantly popular in like one day, and the and the second day it phases out like completely. It, it's really weird. Like the pro players are saying that the rogue is not working for them anymore. But then you can see a player that is super successful with rogue, and they will be like all jumping at that hype hype wagon, you know? Yeah. Wagon. And um, it's really hard to predict what will be happening with Rogue in the upcoming metagame. Yeah, and what I like is I saw, a, I think it was last week, there was a guy who posted on Reddit. I keep talking about Reddit, but th th there's so much Hearthstone content going up there. Not all of it is relevant, but if you look at competitive HS as a subreddit, there's a lot of really cool stuff that ends up there. And there was a fast rogue, somebody called it, which contained novice engineer, gnomish inventors. All they did was draw through their deck um, and mm -hmm. play for board control. And they had these small minions, and I think just one Tinker Sharp Sword. What? And okay. it was really interesting because they played for board in a meta game where everybody plays for board, and they have the edge in those tempo wars because of backstabs and very cheap removal and a good prep eviscerate. That's kind of the strength of rogue is, you know, sometimes play when you play prep eviscerate. If you don't have any card draw, you're gonna fall behind. But his yeah. deck contained two gnomishes, two novice engineers, so the card draw was constant, and as a result, his tempo was super high. So I wonder if we'll see a variant of rogue that maybe contains a bit more card draw and less of a reliance on Tinker Sharp Sword. I've seen a lot of people cut a single Tinker from their deck now. Well, the problem, uh, that's not a problem, but um, it kind of shifted the Rogue in one direction, is that the fact that Blade Flurry is a really powerful tool, and Tinkers is just another way to buff that to buff that card. So now with, uh, with Deadly Poisons, Tinkers, and um, Barbers, uh, 
auto barbers, I mean, you have so many ways to buff your weapon. So the blade flutter is really, really um, omnipotent, and and uh, you know it, it, you will see two blade flutters in almost every single uh, every single row. Yeah. And th there was a time when we saw like a minion heavy rogue. It was called Tempo Rogue, and it was playing around. You know exactly what the deck says says yep. so it was all about tempo like you said the version with card draw uh, is about but um it it wasn't about in the spells but the minions there was even a dark iron uh, dark iron dwarf in there and uh, other creatures just were basically stealing tempo tempo by trading up your your minions Yep, and the interesting part about, I remember AP Drop used to be, I don't know if you know the player, but AP Drop was a streamer who played an amazing amount of Tempo Rogue, and it used to be one of the, you know, most kind of straightforward decks to play for Rogue, because Miracle Rogue for a lot of people was a bit too complex, maybe as, as new players, where Tempo Rogue, although it had a lot of really tricky turns, um, it still seemed like a more straightforward minion heavy play style, and it was really easy for people who'd never played the class to get into it. Mm -hmm, that's true. Okay, so we um, we see a web spinner in Xixo's hand, so I assume it's a mid-range. Uh, it could be both, but yes, you're right. In general, it's definitely more of a, of a mid-range card, otherwise you tend to see a bit more aggressive stuff like Leopard Gnomes, and you cut yeah. that out. Yeah, yeah. Alright, well, the high main confirms it. Exactly. Well, there was a point in metagame when Face Hunter was playing one uh, Savannah high main. That's gotta have that that must have been frustrating. Yeah, like you know, play you, you play with everything, you, you drop everything on board just to play uh, against the face hunt and then one single seven high man goes down and you're like, oh, I don't have an answer for that. Oh my god, Captain's Parrot Falls. Is that just gonna be a kill command enabler this game? I mean I can't imagine that would do anything at all. Maybe there's a green skin in there. You know what? I I lo <laughs> I don't say a lot. That's that's that'd be lying. But some hunters in the past <laughs> have played Greenskin. Um, the only time where that was overplayed was probably in the closed beta phase. I remember Greenskin drew you a card when you attacked, and it was essentially oh, yeah, was... an auto include in every deck that contained a weapon ever. Yeah. That was, that was really pretty crazy. Cool, cool mechanic for like the yeah. parents. Now, they're probably going to re include it sometime. You think there will be some pirates in Blackrock Mountain? Yeah, that'd be nice though. I don't think so, but I'd like to see that. Mm -hmm. Well, dropping down the Violet Teacher when you have two backstabs in your hand, I think it's kind of nice. Kind of nice. Yeah, because you're also before the uh, famed Knife Juggler Unleashed turn, so you can still get some decent value. And if you're, one of your two apprentices is able to eat that Freezing Trap, then you're going to be pretty far ahead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And now there's a, also a problem. Oh, never mind. There's an unleash the hounds because if that's a freezing trap, and it is, you can't really um, allow uh, to, to. You can't really allow the rogue to be in a position when he can uh, trigger the freezing trap with a one-one. Yeah, so definitely not. It's basically it, for free, so that unleash the hounds exactly. is it is an asset to that. Yeah, and it's a really fortunate top deck here for Zixo because you want to get that Freezing Trap to trigger. And, you know, Firebat is uh, shaking his head here. He's like, no way he didn't have the Unleash and top decked it on me. Well, yeah. he did. You really, and he did need it, to be honest. It was the arguably only way to negate the snowball effect that Firebat was about to get going. Yeah, now he, he can't really attack anymore. But uh, if you play the Farseer, you don't have you an pass? option to spawn minions, but then you actually... Then you push um, Hunter to trade for that Farseer, so it will still uh, still mitigate the the Violet Teacher from attacking. But you also, th I think, you have to use the Kill Command on the Violet Teacher or the Owl, to, uh, because the Violet Teacher has too much value in this matchup, yeah. especially after one Unleash the Hounds is uh, is played anyway. So it's good. this is gonna be the Captain's Parrot turn. For Zixo, or is he just gonna? Oh, he's gonna play the Captain's Parrot. No, no he's no. not. I'm disappointed. It's like two uh, mana for maybe one damage. It's a terrible. It's a, it's a bad novice engineer. Like, there's yeah. nothing to do with it. There's no way. But if he had Captain Greenskin, we would have seen it come down. So we know now that it's not in his deck list for sure. Mm -hmm. So um, freezing trapping at Fars here, definitely not bad. All right, so we see Lothab come down here. Lothab is a is great it, is it even good here at because the moment? then you then you can um, 
like trade with a savannah high main, but you don't really have to do this because there's a sap in your hand. Yeah, I was gonna say Lothep's coming down, but I don't think it prevents anything, which is like the transition I was gonna make before he dropped the Drake immediately. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, well, uh, the Lothep on turn five against Hunter is most likely uh, will not most likely will be just a plain blank five five because of the seven Highman on turn six or a pilot sky golem if someone is like you know overpacking it. Uh, but still, uh, uh, the lot has to be kept for the turns when when like a knife juggler under the hands can happen, or um, double kill command can happen. Yeah, double kill cabal, we've seen one kill command, so you want to at least keep it for that knife juggler turn where you flood the board with stuff and you want to make sure that your opponent doesn't manage to get a swing back in the game. You want to seal the game with Lothab more so than start it. And another mm -hmm. high man's mm -hmm. gonna come down with web spinner, putting even more pressure here on Firebat to now, get another sap or a good blade flurry. This is not looking good uh, for Firebat. If it draws into blade flurry, oh, well, no. never mind. He's uh, just never mind. <laughs> Counter top decking Zixo here. He says, You got that unleash. I'm getting my double sap on your high main. Thank you very Get much. Wrecked, son. <laughs> and Zixo is like, Oh, that didn't happen. <laughs> well, he did top deck unleash, so he might be spamming well played on Firebat, but yeah, Firebat, Firebat is, is dying getting well. Of laughter here. <laughs> He's like, I know how salty Zixo gets. Let me abuse that. Oh, man. Oh, wow. Now, with that, Savannah high main and Defensive Argus, well, that will be clearly. Really insane. Well, you can't afford doing that. Look at the amount of damage the rogues got on board. If you do that, you lose the game right away. You have to push for damage anyway because you will lose. Like you know, there's no AOE effect in uh, in your opponent's hand, so you have to push for damage. You have to finish the game as soon as possible. Well, is the game finished here? Actually, let me. Oh, consider. sorry. Is it? I don't know. I'm I'm trying to calculate here. He's getting a total of. Uh... He's gonna have six damage on that weapon. Yeah, he, that, that the game the game's over. I think. Well, uh, that's 19. Am I seeing rate. that right? I'm not exactly sure because my Skype is just like you know. Off yeah, he off. he attacks with Lothem into the two two. And then he deadly poisons face for six, and then eviscerates for five. Is he one off lethal? Am I actually seeing this right? Well, you can eviscerate yeah, he's the web off. spinner, right? You have you eviscerate the web web spinner because you don't want to damage the Lothem. Then you have 12, um, 12, 20. No, no, yeah, you're right. One point of a lethal. <laughs> why? One why I said even twenty? I don't know. <laughs> Over nine thousand. Hmm. All right. So, the Azure Drake going to hit face. So I'm. I think Firebat wants to play it safe. Maybe he's not interested in just pushing for heavy damage now, because he's still a little bit away from winning. And if he uses that deadly poison on a new dagger, it's gonna give him a little bit more damage because he can reuse that two damage um, again with a possible blade furry if anything's found. So, not pushing for whole damage with deadly poison here. <laughs> Alright, so Nat Piggle is gonna fish all day, but not very long actually based on this hand from Firebath. But there's an iron for Grizzly though, right? That might actually be super relevant. Is it? Mm, Can he even kill another it? minion? I don't think so. Like, yeah, there's nothing here that can be done. You can only blob. Freezing yeah, you can blob freezing and, trap, but yeah, that's it. It's not like he's gonna play around it anyway. He has to play as though it's not there. And even his no, no, that's, that's, that... yeah, there's second eviscerate. That's, Sorry, there's no yeah. point. Is he is he just gonna BM the double eviscerate top deck? Yeah, I think so. All right. Kapow. Firebat is smiling. I don't know if there's something satisfying about beating uh, one of your co-teammates, or one of your teammates, but that's going to be 3-1 for him in this series here versus Zixo, who was doing amazingly well. I mean, he, they were both 1-0 going into this match, and that's going to give the lead to Firebat in the group 2-0 versus Zixo's 1-1. Firebat is going to be playing a little later today. This was a pre-recorded yeah. match since they were both busy last week. Um, so um, very interesting series here for me. So also interesting will be the fact how Firebat will change his lineup from last week. Yep, because so we we're going to see this. Yeah, uh, we, can, right we can analyze that before the match starts, so that's really cool. And the next match will be... What will be the uh, next match? It's RDU versus Kaldi. Yep, They're, I think RDU is on a pretty bad run so far as yeah. the Kingman uh, tournament. He's 0-2 uh, 
Yeah, he's O2. Kaldi is 1 1, so I, I think RDU is looking forward to this match to redeem him, himself from the position when uh, he's kind of lacking results. And it, this might be very important for him to you know get get it back at least on one of his feet. Yeah, I, I, it's going to be really important for him to get back in because if he goes 1 2, Kaldi is also going to be 1 2. So they're both <laughs> going to be on exactly <laughs> equal footing, which means in their group is going to be kind of a battle between well, both of them to climb uh, ahead of one another. Yeah, maybe not exactly because we don't, uh, we are not seeing the tiebreakers yet, uh, but still. Right. Yeah. Yeah, tiebreaker points, another matter in the round robin format that's really important because the way that the format works is the top three players end up moving on to the playoffs. But to make sure that you end up in the top three, let's say both players have the same score, it'll be a matter of getting, you know, let's assume you lose 0 to 3. You have a much worse tiebreaker score than if you get two wins and then lose, you know, th two to three. So it's better to, to lose with the most wins possible than to win, than to lose with just complete, you know, wipeout from your opponent. So you don't want to get sweeped as much as possible, which means you have to at least go for your best matchups and play every game till the end because those mm -hmm. tiebreaker scores in a round robin format will matter a lot. Yeah, and there's also a second tiebreaker, uh, which means like if the first tiebreaker will be tied, uh, this can happen, then okay. the immediate uh, result between those two players that are tied is being um, counted. So if, you, if someone wins in the, in the match, he wins the tiebreaker. All right, you know, so that's going to be... From the past game that yep. was played during the yeah. week. So that's going to be pretty important. Now, I'm wondering with RDU and Kaldi, now, I'm curious to see what RDU decides to bring this time around because he's a player who prides himself on getting those lineups perfectly, you know, perfectly kind of, I don't want to say lined up, but mm -hmm. he gets his, you know, class shoot, class selection pretty much flawlessly when he brings it to a tournament. Um, he kind of has a really good read on the way the metagame is going to play out. And as a result, um, and he tends to bring really cocky. good decks. <laughs> he is. He is cocky about yeah. his ability to pick those those decks as well, right? He always has. Yeah. If you ask him, he says, oh, I've got the best lineup. I, I've got the best lineup. Yeah, don't, don't I got ask. it covered. Yeah. yeah, no problem. I've got this. Like it's gonna be a three zero to the end, and then he gets bad results. And when you get bad results, you know what he says? He says, um, "Oh well, it's a card game. It's gonna happen. But over time, my score is gonna be very positive, which tends to be true. Mm -hmm. So uh, at some point, uh, even though he might be a little cocky about his class selection, we still have to give it to him. He's a very consistent player, well, very strong player. He had amazing, just amazing results in 2014." Yeah, like he was he was winning back to back everything. So I don't know. I don't even know what's going on. How how was that even possible? It was pretty intense, actually. Well, not maybe winning, but he was on top of almost almost every single tournament. So that was a really insane run for him. So he he's kind of now struggling, uh, but I bet he will be back with those results again. Yeah, let's hope the. Uh... The, the, the same doesn't happen with Life Coach, where he gets that amazing win streak and then hits a brick wall and then goes on a downswing. Because mm -hmm. that would be kind of unfortunate. Although I'm, I'm pretty sure Life Coach can deal with downswings since he's oh, yeah. a uh, former poker player. Yeah, How yeah. much could he really care about, you know, Hearthstone yeah. downswings at that point? If, if you're a pro in poker, then then your mindset, mindset has to be like insanely good. And that's uh, a rare quality for mm -hmm. um, Hearthstone players, I think. Like almost every single Hearthstone player is still prone to tilting, so um, I, I think I might be seen life coach once being uh, like maybe close to a tilt, but that that didn't even happen. Like that Nosdormu draw from from the uh, from the sneeds that happened, it was more more of a funny thing that that yeah. tilted him and. If if someone else was, was prone to that, if that that happened to someone else, maybe he, he would have been like you know broken from that, but not yeah. life coach. So I I know what tilt is. I'm I'm a player who tends to. I mean I don't handle competition very well in the first place. So when when RNG comes in on top of the whole competitive aspect, the stress mm -hmm. plus the, the the kind of double layer of annoyance just gets to me and then I don't even <laughs> want to play anymore so props to the pro players out there who can actually get the whole thing under control um, I, and you have a, honestly like RDU and Life Coach we're talking about them a lot and they're in your team Nihilum and I think that yeah. that roster of players is uh, is a really really strong one you got together with Thais especially it's just crazy oh well thank you <laughs> that was the yeah, idea for the team so yeah, I'm really fond really... Of, of them uh, getting good results in IEM but kind of unfortunate that they had to lose the top 8 both of them at the same time, especially to that Ragnaros shot from Orange that 
was like 33% in overload to win the game and he got it. Well, that happens. And uh, then yep. he went on an insane streak and win the whole thing. So so really lucky for him and uh, congrats to him, by the way, for winning the IEM Katowice, you know. It's quite yep. a feat. Quite a he's been uh, he's been a little uh, I wouldn't say down on this in this tournament so far. Kingwin Pro League Orange is 0-2, but it's not necessarily because he's a bad player. In fact, you know a lot of players it, they're amazing. I, I think pretty much everyone in the Kingwin Pro League is amazing. Um, a lot of great players are also ending up with 0-2 in the Kingwin Pro League. But well, Orange winning, I yeah, exactly. Has Someone has to be 0-2 after after two matches, and uh, this is the uh, the beauty. When, if you can say so, of Swiss or round robin tournaments, because there's always someone that will have O2 and always someone that will have 2 0, and you know, then you go up and down uh, exactly. with the results. But um, like Orange, uh, I think that his, his loss uh, last week was re really important for him to get his mindset, mindset right for IEM, because he knew he, he like massively dongered himself last week. like he just played playing badly and he yeah. knew that so he was like okay i have to focus and i have to win i am and i i think that loss was um important for his um confidence um uh, because he, he you know he was stomped by uh, if he would win that game like really easily then maybe he wouldn't take i am so um so seriously, seriously right yep, which, and then uh, he he just showed to, uh, he was shown that okay i lost that game because i made mistakes so i have to be better next time and then he won the whole tournament so i, I think that 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 mattered yeah so we'll see him play uh, on thursday i believe so the next match is going to be rd versus caldi we'll be right back guys after a break and yeah don't go anywhere king and pro league will keep going have a nice one